What's up? It's Sasha. This is the Ladcast. Our episode today features Jonathan Gomez, the Mexican-American Alfonso Davies. He's an up-and-coming left back for Louisville City, who's a team in the ESL Championship. He has a lot of potential. I hope you enjoy, and without further ado, let's go. So you've now become the 11th signing to the Ladcast Academy, so we're actually ready to go. Look out for more on that in the future. Maybe there might be a football manager save. Who knows? In March 2020, you signed with Louisville FC of a professional football team in the USL Championship, which is the unofficial second tier of US soccer behind the MLS. How did you come to signing for Louisville? Yeah, so um, I played for the FC Dallas Academy, as you probably know. I was there for about three years, maybe four years max. We kind of were just exploring options and we came here to Louisville City and we talked to the coaching staff. He found that my short-term and long-term goals align better here than what we had at FC Dallas. And we thought that I could continue developing here at a great club like Louisville City. How did you experience being uh, one of the younger prospects in an older locker room, such like that? Yeah, so I just think of, uh, I just think of myself kind of as one of the other 22 guys in the locker room. I mean, obviously, like you said, I'm, I'm one of the younger guys or the youngest guy, but I just see myself as one of the guys. And I mean, something that I can take from being the youngest in the locker room is uh, learning. Um, I think that I can learn a lot from my teammates, my coaching staff, for example, with some of my teammates who played in MLS. So they bring some of that experience in the locker room. And How do you reflect on your season? Yeah, I think it was my first official uh, season as a professional because with North Texas, I was on an amateur contract. It was different because of COVID, obviously, in March, it got canceled and we didn't start up until July and we had a shortened season. So the circumstances were different. But I think for my first season, I did well and I, I hope to continue growing on that and hope to be better this season. What was your favorite moment, you'd say, of this uh, 2020 season with Louisville? I think my favorite moment was uh, my debut, but that came with some mixed feelings because we were opening the new stadium, uh, Lynn Family Stadium, and we lost the game. And I came in in the last, I don't know if it was 10 minutes maybe, and we were down. And actually, apart from that, I actually got hit. I got like a dead leg, like my first play. So yeah, I mean, happy to make the debut, but unfortunate to uh, not get the win. And I, I was out for like a week with a knock. Now that we're in 2021, the USL Championship is scheduled for a season start in May and your contract expires at the end of November. Have you thought about what's next in your career? Yeah, so I think that when my time here with Louisville is over, whatever I do this season will set up myself for whatever comes next. So I guess we'll we'll just see how I do this season. Obviously, I want to do well and hopefully opportunities come with that, but we'll just have to wait and see. So having played in the USL League One previous to this season with Louisville, what differences did you notice in the step up to the championship? Yeah, so I think that, I mean, I played it with North Texas in League One. A difference, a very obvious difference is the locker room in general was mm. FC mm. Dallas or at North Texas. Obviously, it was a lot of FC Dallas Academy either graduates or current Academy players. So it was just a younger locker room and a, young, a different environment um, than over here. We don't have as many young players, as you mentioned. and then. I think the level isn't necessarily too different. Um, I just think, like I said previously, that the USL Championship maybe has players that maybe have a little more experience um, in MLS. Let's go back to 2019 uh, when you joined North Texas SC, an affiliate of FC Dallas on a season-long loan in the USL League One. What was your first season in a semi-pro league like? I think it was a learning experience, but I think I was eased into it with the fact that, as I said, uh, there was a lot of younger players, so a lot of players were going through more or less the same thing. Uh, their first season in a professional, or not necessarily professional, but in a professional environment. But yeah, I think it was good. It was a learning experience, and I mean, I just took that experience, and I'm growing on it now. I grew on it last year. Hope to keep learning. So in your time there, you played alongside Brian Reynolds, now of AS Roma, Nico Carrera of the Latcast Academy, and Jorge Sanquil, Ricardo Pepe, and many more. What's it like to be one of the guys amongst these uh, prolific youngsters? It's an honor. Obviously, it's an honor to play with them. With uh, I grew up with Pepe, playing with him since U13, I think. And then with Nico, I played a few years. And yeah, like I said, it, it's an honor to play with them. And I hope to see him again in the future, whether it be abroad or I think I'll either play with them or against them sometime soon. During your year at North Texas, you actually played alongside your brother, Johan. Johan made his move from the FC Dallas Academy in North Texas in 2019, joining FC Porto. How did your older brother influence your game growing up? 
one of the reasons that I started playing soccer is because of my brother. Uh, I always, when I was young, I always saw jo Johan playing soccer as well as my dad. And I always wanted to be doing what Johan was doing. So I think that was what influenced me to begin playing soccer. And I mean, ever since then, he's always took me under his wing, you know, talked to me, motivated me. And we always go train together when we're home. Yeah, I mean, I think he's helped me a lot to become the player that I am today. Let's talk national team. You've played for both the U.S. and Mexico at youth levels. What's it like to be called into camp and train with the top talent in your age group? It's an honor to be selected as one of the top talents in my age group. But it also serves as a sign to me and everybody else that has been called up. You need to keep working because if not, there's other people that aren't being called up that are going to be motivated by that and want to get called up and they can pass you up if you get satisfied. Can you describe maybe um, like what it's like to be in, uh, in a camp like that for like, say, the Nike tournament? Yeah, so in the Nike friendlies, I'm pretty sure uh, all the teams were staying in one hotel. So it's very professional. It was set up mm -hmm. very nicely. Uh, it's kind of, I guess, mixed feelings because you see the other teams that you're going to play against, like at dinner and stuff. Like you eat with, we played Netherlands, we played Turkey, you eat with them. I mean, you play against them as well. I think it's a great experience for young players. Maybe it was in that tournament that you might have played uh, the Netherlands and you even played uh, Savvy Simons, which is really, really dope. He just made his debut for um, PSG. What's it like yeah. to be in and around those guys that are just now making their debuts in leagues across Europe? Yeah, I think it's a sign that, I mean, we're at the same level as those guys and that, and that we can be, we can keep up with them and we can beat them and that we can be where they are. That motivates us. I mean, me personally, to, to know that we can be there and do the same things that they're doing. Have you, have you begun to think about your of course, the decision that your allegiance for choosing a, a national team to play for. Yeah, so it's very situational, I'd say. It all depends on when it comes down to make that decision, what the situation is. Ultimately, I want to play just like any player want, want, wants to play. So whichever country presents the best opportunity or I think presents the best opportunity, I think that will help me make my, my decision. But right now, I can't really can't really decide that. So, I mean, yeah, we'll see what the what the future holds. In your eyes, is SC Dallas the best academy in the U.S.? I think it is one of the one of the top academies in the U.S. And then specifically in recruiting, I think maybe has an advantage over other academies because there's a lot of talent in North Texas that they can choose from. And even smaller clubs like Solar sometimes don't get the credit that they deserve. And then FC Dallas takes the best talent from there. And producing, they, they definitely have some good facilities and treat us like professionals with locker rooms. And we all train together. A lot of us go to the same school. I think it's a great environment to develop players. And in terms of exporting, Brian was just sold to Roma. But I think that also, like, for example, Philadelphia... Philadelphia Union was up there. They sold yeah. um, Mark McKenzie, Brendan Arrington, who are already both playing first team minutes. And uh, so, yeah, I think uh, it, it's up there. The, their academy is up there. For players in the academy, how much of how much is the success of other graduates for them and maybe yourself an inspiration? When you see a teammate succeed, you're you're happy for them. But at the same time, maybe you want to be in a spot that they're in. So it motivates you or inspires you, like you said to want to work harder so that you can be the next one there. What's a goal that you have for the future, maybe in terms of one year, five years? For short term, I'd say that I want to help uh, my team, my current team, Lou City, uh, win the USL championship this year. And my ultimate goal is to play in Europe. I don't know further down the line, but my ultimate goal would be, I guess, every every soccer player's dream of uh, winning a World Cup. Looking forward to, to yourself and uh, Johan as well at the 2026 World Cup. That final in MetLife Stadium. It's going to be a, a brilliant day. Can't wait for it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming on. Uh, I really hope to see uh, and watch your career progress. Looking forward to it. And I uh, wish you the best of luck. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. All right. See you later. And um, best of luck. And congrats on the Lightcast Academy. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting us.